in the journal video club today we are going to talk about IgA nephropathy IgA nephropathy is characterized by the presence of aberrant IgA1 immunoglobulins deposited on the glomerular mesangium serum IgA1 levels initially elevated in the patients with IgA nephropathy in 30 to 50 percent of cases IgA1 subtypes contain galactose deficient O-glycans that may act as binding sites for anti-N acetyl galactosamine antibodies IgA nephropathy is believed to be a four hit process that eventually leads to IgA deposition on glomerular mesangium Although mesangium deposition is most commonly seen in patients with IgA nephropathy other pathological features still are present So this four hit hypothesis published in American Journal Society of Nephrology 2011 shows pathogenesis of IgA nephropathy described by Suzuki and colleagues as four hit hypothesis that is summarized in the image below in hit 1 there is an elevated serum IgA level with galactose division O glycans so this is recognized by the IgA1 auto anti- antibodies binding of antibodies to this aberrant IgA1 antibodies is hit 2 and once this immune complex is formed they start accumulating in the glomerular mesangium which is hit 3 and finally activation of inflammatory cascade and proliferation of mesangium occurs which leads to various form of glomerular injury it may be rpgn or fsg focal segmental sclerosis or mpgn or whatever is the pathogenetic features So this picture was summarized in IgA Nephropathy New England Journal of Medicine publication 2013 where IgA mesangial deposit leads to the fourth hit cascade process where it could lead to segmental glomerular sclerosis or endothelial proliferation or mesangial cell proliferation tubular atrophy and intestinal fibrosis depending on what is the site of injury so now in this march edition nature's review nephrology a new hypothesis has been produced insights on the mucosa kidney axis in iga nephropathy Here they have reviewed current evidence that links the mucosa in particular the gastrointestinal mucosa and IgA produced by the bone marrow with IgA nephropathy. So this is a key diagram that shows the mechanism of normal IgA production in mucosal and systemic arm of the IgA system in humans. So to understand it it has let us divide it into a mucosal portion and a systemic portion in systemic portion the bone marrow is the one which produces the b cells which are first stimulated by the circulating activated t cell which home to the bone marrow via alpha 2 beta 2 integrin homing receptor So basically there is no direct contact of pathogen in the bone marrow but it is the T cells which has to home in and stimulate the plasma cells to synthesize IgA1 So under T cell control IgA plasma cell synthesize monomeric IgA1 So this is very important that when activation of T cells to the b cell occur they only produce monomeric iga1 
and 95% of circulating IgA is bone marrow derived mon monomeric IgA1 little or no mesangial IgA reaches the circulation and function of this circulating IgA is uncertain so what we see here is the bone marrow derived IgA1 is monomeric form and can never be antigenic or they per se cannot directly reach into immune complex formation or into the mesangium whereas when we come to IgA production at the mucosal level here we see that the organism is directly involved in stimulation of the mucosal lymphoid tissue so in order to classify this lymphoid tissue they have classified it as BILT, MALT, GILT so BILT means bronchial associated lymphoid tissue GILT is gut associated lymphoid tissue which is the payas patches at the ileocecal junction MALT is mucosal associated lymphoid tissue so each one has a different characterization but MALT we have tonsils adenoid and valdeus pharyngeal ring so when this induction arm or the pathogens or an inflammation is exposed to the B cell the effector site is the lam lamina propria this is a intestinal cell this is the uh, uh, lumen side and this is the basal side so mucosal lamina propria where the B cells are primed by the pathogens either JLT, BILT or MALT is stimulated to form IgA1 and IgA2 so this IgA plasma cell synthesize J chain and IgA and assemble dimeric IgA1 and it is not monomeric as we see in the uh, B cell IgA developed from the bone marrow stimulation so this is dimeric IgA2 and unlike the bone marrow where only T cell is involved in stimulating the B cell here the direct stimuli is one the pathogens number two it could be the circulating T cells which can go into the lamina propria and also stimulate them like how they do in the bone marrow via alpha to beta to integrin homing receptor and the other mechanism is T cell independent mechanism which is an innate immune system so here comes growth factors secreted by epithelial stromal and dendritic cells where the food allergens or intrinsic intestinal disease like celiac disease all and all other thing comes in where epithelial stromal and dendritic cell are directly involved through cytokine release or growth factors release like IL-6, IL-10, TGF beta, BAF and April so three mechanisms are involved in the IgA plasma cell synthesis of J chain and this IgA which is secreted is dimeric form of IgA which has a secretory component which attaches to this dimeric IgA and here we see intact PIgA receptor so this secretory chain can attach to this receptor PIgAR and by a vesicle formation is extruded into the lumen of the mucosa so this is the IgA which is maximally produced and secreted in the mucosa to maintain the immune system in the intestine which is entirely different from what is happening into the bloodstream so we have two different mechanism of IgA production where in the circulation it is monomeric form of IgA 
and there is only one way of stimulating the bone marrow and pathogen is not involved in the stimulation whereas here we have three different kinds of stimulation formation of a dimeric IgA which in turn lead uh, attaches to the PIG receptor by the vesicles they are extruded into the lumen which is called secretory IgA so mucosal IgA is SIgA which is dimeric IgA1 or IgA2 and has a secretory component and this secretory IgA binds to the mu uh, microorganism leading to immunity of hyporesponsiveness so alpha defensins and other epithelial antimicrobial peptides support the role of secretory IgA This is very interesting how they have brought out the link between the mucosal and the systemic arm of IgA system in humans. What happens when this dimeric IgA gets into the circulation then comes the galactosidase glycans deficiency which leads to immune complex formation. So now nature's review in nephrology, the mucosal kidney axis in IgA nephropathy describes in a various key words what is happening in the formation of IgA nephropathy. So genome wise as wide association studies in patient with IgA nephropathy has identified risk loci in genes involved in the intestinal mucosal integrity and immune network. So this GWA studies goes on over many years where people have changes in their genes involved over various countries like China, India, Africa and how the immune system and the intestine has evolved and immune responses to these mucosal antigen and also immunization studies suggest that the systemic response to mucosal antigen is exaggerated in patients with IgA1, IgA nephropathy. So patients with IgA nephropathy have increased reactivity to dietary protein associated with subclinical intestinal mucosal inflammation although in general they do not have over dietary intolerance. So an interaction of environment or the gene or the inflammation or the food to the intestinal IgA mechanism of innate immunity and plasma cell immunity has some significant interaction which leads to IgA nephropathy and dimeric IgA1 coming back into the circulation. Very rarely IgAN is associated with GI diseases, whether they share a common pathogenesis or whether gastrointestinal inflammation exacerbates IgA nephropathy is uncertain. So mucosal alterations such as respiratory tract infections could activate the innate immune system, aggravate a pre-existing IgA nephropathy and promote disease manifestations such as macrohematuria rather than share a pathogenic link with IgA N. Intervention studies targeting the mucosa in IgA nephropathy have been inconclusive so far but new studies are ongoing. So these are the risk alleles for IgA nephropathy identified by GWA studies and they have identified risk allele locus and the genes involved and function of the encoded protein. In summary, studies of naturally occurring immune response to mucosal antigen challenges and also immunization studies suggest that systemic response to a mucosal antigen challenge in IgA nephropathy is exaggerated perhaps because of a shift in production of mucosal type IgA to the bone marrow type. The causes and consequences of these changes in the microbiome might indicate important function alteration in mucosal immunity relevant to pathogenesis of IgA nephropathy and require further study. 
Further available evidence indicates that the patient with IgA nephropathy have increased reactivity to dietary protein including gluten, cow's milk, egg protein although the disease is not associated with overt dietary intolerance. One small observational study of dietary gluten elimination points towards a clinical benefit of this intervention but, but this study is far from conclusive. So now what are the intervention studies? So this, although we know the intervention of what we treat with immunosuppression or other measures which targets only the mesangial deposition of IgA, here we are targeting the intestinal IgS manufacturing mechanism where the innate immunity as well as the T cell as well as the bacterial or the genome is involved. So in one study, 9 patients with IgA nephropathy received 5 amino salicylic acid 2.4 grams per day for 6 months which is commonly used in chronic inflammatory bowel disease but only 2 patients experienced long lasting more than 50% reduction in proteinuria. Similarly, disodium chromoglycate can effectively prevent the onset and progression of IgA nephropathy induced by oral immunization in an experimental mouse model of the disease. There is another therapeutic approach tested in a pilot study involving patients with IgA nephropathy was to administer enteric budisonide in a formulation which targets release of corticosteroids to the ileocecal region. And in this study therapy resulted in amelioration of proteinuria, results of an ongoing larger randomized control trial, the Nifigan trial are awaited. So budisonide enteric coated tab tablets to release these immunosuppressive corticosteroid at ileocecal region seems to be very exciting. So in summary, a true, albeit very rare association probably exists between IgA nephropathy and gastrointestinal diseases, in particular celiac disease. Uncertainty exists, however, as to whether these diseases indeed share a common pathogenesis or whether gastrointestinal inflammation exacerbates latent or mild IgA and thus is its clinical detection. Therefore, the role of respiratory and pharyngeal immune system in pathogenesis of IgAN is not established. However, little doubt exists that acute infection at these sites can exacerbate clinical manifestation of pre-existing IgA nephropathy. Conclusion Link points to the existence of, existence of IgA immune system access between the mucosa and the bone marrow which leads to deposition of IgA1 in the kidney. So the key points they have mentioned here is one is interventional studies, one is mucosal alterations, other they talk of GA diseases and IgA. They talk about identifying risk loci in gene and immunization studies that suggest systemic response to mucosal antigen is exacerbated in patient with IgA nephropathy and also link of dietary protein associated mucosal inflammation. Thank you. We welcome comments and any other preparation of the slides can be published for the sake of discussion and leisure viewing. Thank you.